And good evening to all of you. I am Ali Belshi, and for Joy Reid, and we begin the readout tonight with the fight for Ukraine, which is going to continue into its sixth day tonight after a first round of so-called peace talks concluded this morning. Now, those talks were held at Ukraine's border with Belarus, and they yielded no breakthroughs. While President Zelensky sent high-level officials to negotiate in good faith, the Russian delegation was led by Vladimir Putin's, quote, advisor on culture, a choice junior enough that may indicate he has little interest in ending the siege. In a speech late today, President Zelensky of Ukraine criticized the talks, saying they were conducted against the background of bombardment. He accused Russia of war crimes, calling for the destruction of their economy and for their removal from the United Nations Security Council, uh, which has a rotating chair. Russia is the chair of it at the moment, ironically. Meanwhile, Russia's currency, more unstable than ever thanks to crippling new sanctions, the European Union is preparing a massive delivery of weapons to Ukraine. They've closed Europe's airspace to all Russian aircraft, as have other countries. But Putin's not only isolated on the world stage, he's being humiliated on the actual battlefield. Think about this. 75% of the forces that he staged around Ukraine, on the borders of Ukraine, are now inside the country, and the shelling continues. But despite Russia's vast military superiority to, to Ukraine, Russia has somehow been unable to take and hold any major cities after five days of fighting. They still haven't gained control of Ukraine's airspace. Their advance has been plagued by logistical failures, broken supply lines, delays. But it may be attributed to something else. Far stiffer resistance than anyone expected. In addition to the bravery of the Ukrainian armed forces, we've seen powerful images posted to social media showcasing the courage of ordinary Ukrainian people, including video of people physically blocking tanks with their bodies. There are signs that some of Russia's soldiers didn't even know they were actually headed to war. According to an expert with the German Marshall Fund, quote, soldiers captured during the invasion have told interviewers that they believe they were taking part in exercises, end quote, which, as you recall, is what the Kremlin was telling everyone. She said, quote, many of them, if not most of them, say they've not been informed by their leadership why and where they are going, end quote. To that point, Take a look at this recent video showing a Ukrainian resident mocking a Russian soldier whose tank reportedly ran out of gas. Потому что тоже пацаны не знают, куда еду, не ехать, блин. И о, я вот всю колонну пообсуражил таких, как вы. Никто не в курсе вообще, кто куда едет. I asked the whole column of people like you. No one knows where they're going. The Russian soldier didn't appear to have any idea where he was going. Another indication that Putin's forces may not have been as prepared for this conflict as Putin wanted the world to think. Meanwhile, by raising the specter of nuclear war, two times in a week, by the way, but he escalated it yesterday, Putin is further alienating himself from the world at large. This morning, Ukraine's ambassador to the United Nations responded to that threat with some blunt words for the Russian autocrat. Listen to him. If he wants to kill himself, he doesn't need to use nuclear arsenal. He has to do what the, same, what, what the guy in, in Berlin did in a bunker in May. 1945. The guy in the bunker in Berlin, he's talking about Hitler. Now, report, new reporting now indicates that Putin may escalate his attacks further in an attempt to break Ukraine's momentum. We're already seeing increased Russian shelling in some residential neighborhoods in Kharkiv, which is the country's second largest city. It's in eastern Ukraine. A senior defense official today said that frustration on the battlefield could lead to a more aggressive approach by the Russians. Satellite imagery is now showing a 17-mile-long convoy of Russian vehicles, tanks, and artillery 15 miles from Ukraine's capital of Kyiv as of this morning. 
Joining me now is NBC News correspondent Erin McLaughlin. She's in Lviv in western Ukraine. She was in Kyiv. And NBC News senior international correspondent Keir Simmons reporting from Moscow. Good evening to both of you. Uh, good morning to you. Erin, uh, let's start with you in Lviv. Uh, many people in Ukraine have moved west. Some of them have stopped where you are in cities in western uh, Ukraine. Others just kept on going uh, to the Polish border. The Poles saying in excess of about a half a million people, I believe, have now crossed over. That's right. And Ukrainians that I've been speaking to here in Lviv are absolutely traumatized. I was speaking to one woman at a shelter here. Uh, she was from Belarus originally, was living in Odessa and fled the city uh, with her husband. And she was incredibly concerned, not only for her own safety, but also for the safety of her mother living in Belarus, describing the agony that her mother was facing as she had to watch Russian forces fire missiles missiles from Belarus in the direction of her daughter. It's those kinds of traumatic scenes that I'm hearing from so many Ukrainians. Now, today, in speaking to people here, they were extraordinarily concerned with the situation in Kharkiv. It's that city in the northern eastern section of the country, the second largest city, which was subject to what Ukrainians allege were seemingly indiscriminate uh, artillery fire, grad rockets raining down on the center of the city, striking homes, according to the Kharkiv mayor. 80 homes were flattened today by Russian forces, nine civilians killed, including three children. And it's the civilian toll that is so concerning here with the International Criminal Court opening up a case, an investigation into possible war crimes by the Russians during this invasion. It was something that President Zelensky noted during his address that he posted on his Telegram account uh, earlier this evening, uh, calling on the international community to strip Russia of its U.N. Security Council seat, also calling into question uh, the, 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 um, the negotiations that are now going on between the Russian delegation and the Ukrainian delegation in Belarus, saying how can there be negotiations when one side is shelling the other, Ali? Uh, Aaron, stand by. Kier Simmons is for us in Moscow. Kier, one of the things we've been commenting on in the last few days is the degree to which U.S. intelligence about what was going to happen uh, turned out to be very accurate. Um, and it was, it was the basis on which the U.S. and the European Union and NATO were acting. Even Vladimir Zelensky did not believe some of that intelligence. But one of the pieces that was reported is that the Russians were going to go for Kiev, the capital city. And they were going to be able to take it in a matter of days, that, that, that if whatever Russia wanted out of Ukraine because of its military superiority, it was going to be able to achieve. That has not happened right now. How is that reverberating in Russia? Well, it's not reverberating very well. Uh, people are noticing because despite what is said on Russian television, Russian state television, uh, which uh, certain aspects of the population watch, particularly, for example, older generations. So they have a, they're getting a different perspective. Many people, of course, are able to talk to people uh, in Ukraine. But you know, Ali, I had an opportunity to listen to a, a briefing today from uh, Western officials, and it really highlighted that in the view of Western officials, Russian intelligence was bad. Now, the Pentagon has already said that, that Russia is facing uh, more resistance than it thought. Here's what Western officials uh, said today. Uh, they said uh, that Vladimir Putin's uh, pronouncements in an essay he wrote last year and in multiple speeches that Ukraine and Russia were brothers and that Ukrainians would welcome the Russians with open arms, that he really believed that so much so that he baked it into the Russian uh, strategy. So you know, remember, President Putin is absolutely the, in charge. He, he is the commander. He made the plans. He baked that in. The fact that that hasn't happened has surprised everyone in the Kremlin, including uh, President uh, Putin himself. Here's another aspect uh, that we learned in, in the past few days, Ali, which is really fascinating. It goes to the same point. This pronouncement by President Putin that the nuclear forces will be put on higher alert, he said that he did that because of aggressive comments by NATO. Now, it appears that a, 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 a speech made by the UK defense minister was shown on, on Russian television, and that's what, if you like, wound President Putin up. So, President Putin appears to have been watching Russian television, seen something he didn't like, 
and made an announcement of Russian foreign policy. I'll let you fill in the blanks for what other uh, former president that uh, sounds yeah. like. Yeah, no kidding.